from the surface of an asteroid. The Japanese craft named Hayabusa was in space for seven years. And our science correspondent, Jonathan Amos, joins me in the studio. And I, I, I mean, this has been creating such excitement all afternoon right across the world, hasn't we, it? We've had a bit of fun, haven't we, Maxine? Yeah. Yes, we were waiting for this capsule to come back. Uh, it came back about three o'clock British time, which is night time in Australia. They were targeting a, a prohibited military area, a safe area where if uh, bits were to fall out of the sky, they wouldn't hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. And we waited and waited, and eventually the video came back, and it, and it was really quite spectacular. Uh, a fireball coming across the sky. You have to imagine that uh, this capsule, which has been out near Mars with a spacecraft, and here it's they come are. In. If yeah. we just look here, here we it comes. Just, we can see it here. Now, if you look at the pictures, you can see a, 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 a main fireball. That is the main spacecraft of Hayabusa breaking up. But if you look in front of it, we'll catch it in just a moment. There's one little spot of light off to the right, down, down near the bottom of the picture. That is the capsule. And you'll see the rest of the spacecraft is totally destroyed. One little point of light hangs on. And that is this 40 centimetre wide disc that has a, a heat shield on it to protect it from temperatures up to 3,000 degrees. And it managed to come through the Earth's atmosphere, slowed sufficiently, and then deployed a parachute and landed in the Australian outback. And the, uh, the scientists then went looking for it in a helicopter. They found where it was. Of course, it's night time, so it's too dangerous to land. But they know precisely where it is. It looks intact. And they'll go back in the morning and try and recover it. So come daylight, there's going to be uh, a lot of speculation and excitement as to whether there's actually even any dust inside it. Well, Hayabusa left Earth in 2003 to visit this asteroid called Itokawa, which is named after a, a famous Japanese uh, rocket scientist. It spent about three months at the asteroid in 2005. It had a number of technical problems throughout the mission, in fact. But every time a problem came up, the engineers managed to find a solution. It landed on the asteroid, and it had this horn-like affair, which was supposed to, to go down onto the surface and fire a ball bearing, and that would kick dust up, and it would go inside into the capsule that we've just seen return. Now, the analysis that was done suggested that the ball bearing did not fire properly. Mm. But the scientists say just the mere fact of the probe touching down on the surface of the asteroid probably kicked up material and that came inside the capsule. What are they going to discover from this dust if they can get some? We'd like to know about the early history of uh, the solar system. The solar system was created around the sun about four and a half billion years ago, just over. Now if you want to see rocks, the building blocks from that time, you can't find them on Earth because on Earth rocks are constantly recycled so you have to go into space to do that. We get some rocks from space, these are meteorites, but of course, as you've seen, as they come through the atmosphere, they get very burnt mm. up. So you want pristine samples off the surface of an asteroid. And that's the point of going to places like Itokawa, picking them up, bringing them back in a safe manner, and then you can put them in a laboratory and look at them very, very carefully to see the sort of ingredients that went in to building the Earth. Okay, Jonathan, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, let's try and get the weather 